Hi, welcome to this Solution Focus webinar. I'm John Bullock and joining me today is Heather Wright. Hi. And we're going to take you through this webinar today. We're going to take you through what we call our solution focused system. There's a few things that we're going to teach you, a few things hopefully you're going to learn uh, from this. The first is how our thoughts stop us achieving things. The second being that we focus on problems rather than solutions a lot of the time. Successful people have a system. And finally, what that solution focus system is. Great. That's what we're going to look at. But before we get stuck into this, there's kind of four areas that we deal with when we go into de uh, when we're working with individuals or organisations. The first being the heart of that pyramid, being personal performance. So kind of getting the best out of ourselves before we go and help other people. We've got an element of coaching there where we help others one-to-one -one, and then we've got an element of team leading teams. So that's the wider piece. And then finally, that organizational development piece, that strategic it's really, thinking. It's really important to get that personal piece at the heart of it, isn't it? Because yes. otherwise, when you're coaching someone else, all they're thinking about is, well, it's all right, you telling me this, but you're not doing it. And, yeah, uh, and because we lead by example more than anything else, once we've got that, getting to the team is good, coaching them, and of course, once you've got yourself and the team sorted out, that organizational yeah. development follows naturally. Absolutely, which is why that personal performance piece does sit at the heart of that, of that yeah. pyramid, if okay. that makes sense. Okay. So here are the few people that we work with. Uh, this slide isn't to kind of show off and say, ooh, look who we work with. It's just to give you an indication that businesses like this are thinking about solution-focused systems because they know that their people get a benefit from it, they're more productive, the business runs better, and so on and so on. And, and it's new to some of these clients, but some of them have been doing it for years. Yeah. Aon, for example, yeah. have been doing it from before it was Aon, when yeah. W. Clement Stone was in the driving seat. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so... <clears throat> These are a few areas of competence that we go into. We're certainly not going to go through all of these, but it gives you an indication of some of the areas where we do help uh, different organizations, whether that's through leadership or change management or personal performance there. Okay, so what is going to happen? We're going to give you 30 to 4 minutes of free stuff. That's what this webinar is all about. Introducing That's you. A lot. It is introducing nice? you to the solution focus system. Uh, we're not going to sell anything to you. So I know that people go on these kind of things in the, you know, and you get on there and all it is is a 30 minute sale. We're not going to do that. If you do want more information offers about anything, you can book a call with us at the end of this. Uh, but that's about it. We're not going to take you through anything else. OK, so that's what's going to happen. Distractions. In today's uh, age, there might be a number of things that you've got going on. Might be. I bet there definitely is. <laughs> you may want to close your emails popping through. You may want to turn off social media. I know that's a bit of an ask. <laughs> what but will you we may, do without it? You may want to do that. Maybe your mobile phone's on silent. I would suggest taking notes. The brain will remember things more effectively if we, if we write things down. Okay. Great. So, is this you? Too many problems and only a few solutions. Oh, boy. <laughs> I bet it is. I bet it is. Maybe not getting the results that you want in life or personal. Do you know, pretty much everybody I meet always would like something a little bit more. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Not quite getting what that you want. A little bit of dissatisfaction. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Sometimes it's only generated when you look at what other people have got. Yeah. But even so. Are you maybe worrying about stuff? Lots of scenarios. I saw, I saw some research the other day that something like 90-odd percent of the worries that we've got aren't real. They're, they're, they're made up in our own head, which, mm. which we're going to talk about. Middle of the night is worse for that one, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe that's you there. So it's time for change. Are you ready time to make? Uh, to, are you ready to make that change? To change the old habits, bring in some new habits mm -hmm. and become that little bit more successful. It can okay. be little changes, first of all, though, absolutely, can't it? Absolutely, yeah. You don't have to do massive change. So today first. we're going to explain a solution-focused success system. It's a four-piece system, but there's five steps to it, which might sound a little bit weird. But uh, we'll, it's we'll, not a four-piece we'll... system. That's a five-piece system. <laughs> we'll take you through it. So the first piece of this jigsaw is thinking and behaviour. Understanding our thinking and our behaviour and how that impacts what we try and achieve and the people around us. Mm -hmm. There's various different things that we can go through here. The psychological stuff, the science stuff, and we're just going to touch literally for a moment on, on, on each of those things. So the first thing I want to talk about regarding thinking and behavior uh, is something that I call the tear cycle. Okay, we're going to work at this backwards. So the first point is results. Okay, 
results are pretty much expected. Whether they're in your personal life, whether they're in your work life, you're pretty I mean, much expected. expected by others. Absolutely. Oh, right, yeah. okay. Yeah. And also ourselves, I think, a lot of the time. We're taught, aren't we, to expect we, we've got to do well at this or got to do well at we that. We certainly tell ourselves off if we don't get results. Mm, oh, absolutely. I was hoping to have got this by now. By now, I should have. Yeah. By now. Especially I... in an organisation, results are a given. Everybody's pretty yeah. much expected You're to get results. You're measured on them. Absolutely. Actions are normally given. Now, what I mean by that is certainly in a business, there's the job role. Get on with it. Right. Does that make sense? So we, we don't teach people the actions. We just give them the job role, give them the job description, see what their experience is and, that, and ask them to get on with it. Yeah. Okay. However, the emotions are often not considered. So that we don't often sit down with people to go, well, you know, what emotions are you going to use when you do that job? Does that make sense? Oh, okay. We yes, don't I really, see. we don't really build into that. And absolutely, people thinking, are frightened of emotions. They by are, the way, aren't they? Yeah, they are very, you know, very. I frightened. was with someone the other day who said, "Oh, I was doing a, I was doing a personal development review with someone, and I was terrified. They looked like they were going to cry, or they looked <laughs> like they were going to get angry. So I closed it as quickly <laughs> as possible. <laughs> absolutely, right? Is that everything? Go. And and that's one of the reasons they're often not considered because we don't like. We, we're scared of dealing yeah. with them. Um, but the thing that leads to our emotions is our thinking, and our thinking is often assumed. Mm-hmm. We we assume people can think correctly. We don't really teach how to think. We just teach how to do, if that makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. No, well, people don't think they can control their thinking. They don't think they yes, can control their thinking. Right. But they also assume they're doing it right because they've been doing it since they were born. Yes. Uh, that's not necessarily yeah. the case. Yeah. Just because yeah. you've been doing something doesn't mean you've been doing it effectively. Absolutely. It's not about right or wrong. It's yeah. more about how effective can yeah. you be with it. So what we try and do... When, we, when, we t- when we're talking about thinking and behavior and we're educating people, is we help people understand the difference between helpful and hindering thinking. Okay. So just like you've said, just because somebody's been thinking that way for a long time doesn't mean they've been doing it in a helpful way. They could actually, in fact, we beat ourselves up all the time, don't we? Mm. We tell ourselves what we're rubbish at, what we can't do on a regular basis. Oh, we're our own worst enemy. It's not very often that we sit down and I, I'll ask this to the people listening to this webinar when's the last time you sat down and reminded yourself what you were great at don't want to boast yeah. <laughs> don't want me to and boast. you might do it because we're in the business <laughs> but so good at so many things they often people talk to themselves in a, in a bad way and we don't remind ourselves what we're great at and of course if we can teach people how to think in a solution focused way rather than a problem focused way we can help them change that thinking it doesn't have to be nauseating does yes. it? it doesn't have yeah. to be embarrassing no. and it also doesn't have to be untruthful lots of Correct. people are frightened of saying I'm yeah. great at something because the little voice in the back of their head goes no you're not yeah. no you're not absolutely absolutely so if we give them people a new set of thinking skills we can str- they can strengthen their emotions and use it as a focus. They can use those chemicals in the system mm-hmm. to get the energy that they want in order to achieve and take action, which would be new and improved, because you've probably heard that saying, if you always do what you've always done. You'll always get what you've always Absolutely. got. Absolutely. So if you yeah. want something new, you've got to do something new. But what we say is if you're going to take some new actions, you need the energy to do it and the thinking in the first place. Of course. Okay. And of course, if you're taking new and improved actions, then you're going to get improved, sustainable, maximize, maximum results. Absolutely. Promise. Change what you do in one way. I mean, sometimes we make we change what we do and we don't change it for the better. But we learn. The main thing we is do. not to stick with that. You Absolutely. know, at least doing something different gives yeah. you an option to then do something different again. Yeah. So we call this a tear cycle. Thinking, emotions, actions, results. Let's get the thinking right. Let's go right to the source and then we can change the results uh, where we come to. Okay. On that note, a little bit of psychology. I can't, I can't. Something called self-talk. Most of us have heard it. It's it's that internal conversation that can constantly... do thinking, can't yeah, do thinking. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, this is where some people do get a little bit, they think it's a bit pink and fluffy around the yeah, kind of yeah. this stuff. Because it's a little bit like talking in the mirror, isn't it? I'm brilliant, I can do this, I can do that. Actually, it doesn't need to be like that. It you know, it can be very, very focused and it's just about telling yourself, believing in the right thing. And by doing that, by having the conversation in your head, because you're pretty good at, most people are pretty good at doing the bad stuff. I can't, I'm not very good, I couldn't possibly, rather than I can't, I'll find a way, how could I possibly? Yeah. If that makes sense, okay. yeah? Um, so helpful thinking is what we want. We do have hindering thinking. Hindering thinking, some hindering thinking keeps us alive, so that's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But not all hindering thinking. I shouldn't is, run across uh, this road without looking. Just believing yeah. that I can. Absolutely. Throw myself off this building. I can fly. Yeah. No, no, you can't. Yeah. No, that hindering thinking's good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we talk about a little bit of brain science, which we'll touch in a moment, and a little bit of this cognitive behavioural stuff, which is which is self-talk. So some people like psychology, some people like science. Mm. Um, well, let's just touch on a bit of both. Um, this is a favourite person of uh, ours, isn't indeed, it? Indeed, indeed. Yeah. In fact, I'm looking at a picture of his on the wall you are, right yeah, now. Are, actually, uh, not the yeah. one on the slide, but there's one on the wall because... Uh, he was a master at this. He was. I am the greatest. He was very clever with his emotional intelligence level, wasn't yeah. he? The way he talked to himself. Now, what most people don't know that we have the fortune of knowing is that he was saying that I am the greatest when he was 12. Absolutely. And when he was 12, uh, he wasn't the greatest, was he? He wasn't. Uh, as you can see, he was a skinny little kid from Louisville. Absolutely, yeah. But he used to say this to himself tens of times a day. Now, if it was easy as that, we'd all be sitting at home right now, maybe going, I am the greatest, I am the greatest, I am the greatest. And we'd all become the greatest. We know like that's not magic. Yeah. Okay. But, but this guy, he took action on the back of the thinking. And his mantra was, you know, he would watch videos of his opponents 10 times longer than other boxers was. He'd be the first one in the gym and the last one to leave. He would take action. But if you say to yourself, I am the greatest, maybe 80 times a day, your brain starts going... Uh, okay, uh, what do we need to do then? To well, it's, make what you the you rela- it's what you relate it to. If you say I'm the greatest and sit on the settee eating crisps and, and <laughs> munching <laughs> yes. on cheese, yeah. you know, then your brain is going, you're a liar. Yeah. Because that's not what the greatest. Yeah. But if your visualization of what the greatest means, yeah. whether or not it's cycling or, you know, uh, bodybuilding or, or indeed in work, if you visualize what that person does, then it pulls you towards doing that sort of thing. What would So one of the things I always do when I'm trying to get fitter, when I've, I've had a bit of a slump on my fitness is I start buying magazines about running or cycling or whatever it is because while I'm reading it it's inspiring me to get out on the bike because I look at these people and I compare what I'm doing and I go well people who are great do this yes and right I should go out and do yes. this I should get out on my bike I should get out and run I should go to the gym I should not be eating this big bar of chocolate <laughs> you know so it's kind of like that and it inspires you to do that on your journey to becoming yeah, absolutely. Uh, a great example there. So let's start talking to ourselves in a better way. But you know what? If you don't like talking to yourself, if you don't like the fluffy psychology bit, let's just for a moment talk about what goes on in your head. We have brain pathways. We know this now. Neurology is about 100 years old, but we kind of know what's going on to a point in the brain. Mm-hmm. There's lots of different pathways. When you have a thought, it, some electricity sparks, it sends some chemical down a pathway, and at the end of it, we kind of get our action. Yes. Now, we know we can measure MRI scan, measure the chemi- chemicals in the brain, all that kind of stuff. You take somebody that's got depression, maybe, versus somebody that hasn't, there will be a different chemical makeup in, 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 the, in the brain. So we know that we can physically change these pathways and research tells us all of the times uh, all of the time that if we do certain things and think in a certain way, we can change what we think. We absolutely can. It's like building a muscle. It's, this yes. is like just like building a mental example. muscle. Uh, and it's not like like you're plugging yourself into a machine like they did in Total Recall. This is about <laughs> doing it. it. Unfortunately, you have to do it the what I would call the hard and long way, which yeah. is you have to control your thinking. You have to build the pathways. Every thought is like lifting a weight in a gym. It is. Uh, and you start off with a light weight and then you gradually move up. But the more yeah. often you do it, the more strength you have behind yeah. it. They grow with use, don't they? They grow and with they use. Shrink with and they shrink with dish yeah. use. So yeah. we need to grow those. And that means we can, while we're uh, lying in bed, we can be building mental muscle. Mm, Just before yeah. we get up in the morning, while we're driving the car, we can be building yeah. mental muscle. The, uh, the other option, of course, is that we're driving the car and we're building pathways that we don't want oh honestly look at that idiot yeah. oh who do they think they are in that blah 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 yeah. type of car that's oh, annoyed oh, me that's yeah. really annoyed me yeah. and what we're saying to ourselves is i'm the sort of person who gets annoyed by these things i'm the sort of person who feels like a victim or i'm the sort of person who gets angry and they're the type of people who and all the time we're thinking we can be leading ourselves down a pathway yeah. subconsciously that is not good for us so before we think a thought it's almost like saying what do i want to be Yes. What? Who do I want to be? What types of thoughts should I have? Yeah. I have a particular friend. Whenever she gets drunk, she always compares herself to other people and says, "I wish I was more <laughs> like so and so. So and so is a nice person. Uh, I'm not a nice person." Which no, is when, gen- which is dangerous anyway because it's only our perception of somebody else anyway, yeah, which is yeah. it's often not correct. No. But you make you make a good point there about choosing what we want because it actually fits into the next piece of the jigsaw oh, okay. very very nicely. So when we've understood our thinking and behaviour, we then move on. 
to the next part, which is what do we want and why do we want it? Mm-hmm. Um, and most people, they that first piece of the jigsaw, that thinking and behavior, people skip it and go straight into this is what I want and this is why I want it. We've got to do the thinking and behavior bit first. Then we can go, okay, so what is it that we want in life? What do we want to achieve? And why do we want it? And there's various different techniques there, but we're just going to touch on a couple. So the first thing is about getting goal clarity. Mm-hmm. So often people don't quite know what they want. My my example of this is if you're going to run a marathon in a straight line and you are 1% off at the beginning, <laughs> you are nowhere near the end point. Right. Does that make sense? You're not going to be with anybody else because yeah. they're never in a straight line anyway. They've right, all yeah. turned left at the yeah. last traffic lights. But I see where you're getting. So the key thing for this for me is absolutely getting clarity mm-hmm. over what you want and you know, getting real. I mean, if you if you ever speak to somebody that you would consider being successful, mm-hmm. they will often say to you that they knew what they wanted. They had a yes. very clear picture. I always wanted to be a yes. Yeah. They had a very clear picture of what that looked like and what what that was able. The brain was then able to make a picture of that, so you knew what you were aiming for. Mm-hmm. But people, I often find there's there's various different goal defining techniques that we use out there when when we're teaching this kind of system. Um, but there's one technique in particular that I, quite, I like to quite use, and it's called umbrella goals. And as you can see there, there's a nice big colourful umbrella. That's a there. pretty umbrella. The whole point of this is sometimes we don't get goal clarity because in our lives we have 10 million things going on Mm. all at once. And this is a great goal defining technique that if you've got a very big goal that you can't quite see, maybe it's a project or a vision or something like that, Mm -hmm. but you can't quite pinpoint it. What it allows you to do is you imagine that you've got the vision kind of the top of the umbrella. What you're able to do then is take each section of that umbrella, just chunk it down. You know, it's kind of, how do you eat an elephant at a piece at a time? And it is richly that simple. So if I've got a vision to become a director, for argument's sake, so what areas of my life do I need to start thinking about? Education, money, career, maybe. And we start chunking those down. Even I would like to be happier. I often, I have seen people use this for that. I want to be happier. Okay, so what areas in my life do I want to do some thinking about in order to fundamentally be happier because it's quite easy when you take it when you take an intangible goal like i would like to be happy yes which is intangible as opposed to i would like a million pounds yes uh when you start saying okay what areas in your life make you happy and what areas in your life make you unhappy it yeah. starts to become tangible so yes. you start saying well i'm not fit enough yes i don't earn enough money yeah uh my relationships could be better uh i love my family i spend time with them yeah. that gives you some areas yeah. and then you chunk that down and you Absolutely. start saying okay so you'd like to be fitter yeah. in what way would you like to be fitter i'd like to have less fat i'd like to be able to run a bit more i'd yeah. like to be able to play football with That's my right. son and blah 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 the, the smaller you chunk it down, the more it becomes tangible. So what happens is you start off with, I'd like to be happier, which yes. is intangible. And then at the end of it, you end up with an action, like I need to I buy think- some trainers, yep. which is a physical thing that you can do. Yep. Uh, and gradually those all those little bits work towards that big Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. So you go, you can take an intangible goal and it becomes tangible yep. for the things you do, which makes people happy because they've got an actual thing they can get yeah. a hold of. Yeah. And, I, and that's why I really like using that technique. And mm-hmm. there is lots of other techniques in business, smart goals and X, Y, and Z that we can use. Uh, but for me... The where you start is if you don't quite know what you want to start with, mm-hmm. do some thinking around that, and then and then kind of start chunking it down. Okay. So that's that's about getting a target. That's about getting a what do we want. Then we may, need to move on to why do we want it. And we've broke motivation down here into two different motivations. We called it towards, and we'll look at away from in a moment. You might have heard this as push and pull, or positive and negative, or whatever it may be. Towards motivation for me is quite simple. I choose to do this thing because. Uh, there's a benefit for me at some point, whether that's a feeling, whether that's money, whatever it may be. There's a pretty, there's pretty much a benefit. And you know what that benefit is, okay? Away from motivation is that little bit different. You're doing it. Some pain is causing you to do it. You're moving away from something. So the example I, I always like to use is paying my mortgage. <laughs> Really? Really? <laughs> That's your example. Now, Go for it. paying my mortgage, you could say there's a benefit for paying my mortgage because I'll own the house. That's mm-hmm. fine. I do have a number of years left on that mortgage. It doesn't really get me excited when I see that money coming out of my bank going, mm-hmm. I'm going to own my house in about 15 years. However, if I don't pay the mortgage, the pain 
could be quite great. Absolutely. <laughs> Losing your house yes. is a painful experience, yes, as many have yeah. found. So so you've got a little bit of pleasure. You can either work on the pleasure, I own my house. The, ch- the challenge with, with seeing that as towards motivation is because you're usually already living in your house, yes. so you don't see any benefit. It's not like towards motivation where if I save up, I will... I will then own the yeah, car correct. and you can press your nose up against the glass of the car showroom going goody goody one day yeah. and and you've not got it yet when you're living in a house the paying the mortgage becomes a painful experience and therefore it is away from motivation it's yeah. not towards yeah absolutely absolutely okay so when we understand what we want and why we want it and we've done some work around our thinking and behaviors we move into the third piece of the jigsaw which is about generating ideas and plans on how you're going to achieve it so just notice by now there's two pieces of the jigsaw we Mm -hmm. do before we even get into how we're going to achieve it and a lot of people jump straight into this bit They'll go straight into, I kind of know what I want. How can I get there? And actually, there's so much more work up front you need to do. If you do the work up front with the first two pieces of the jigsaw, when we get to think uh, ideas and planning, you're in a much better place then to generate ideas and plan. However, I'd like to make a point that it's ideas and then planning, not both together. Okay. Which we often, we kind of go, let's make a plan. Yeah. Uh, We need to generate ideas first. Then make people get it very into impatient, don't Absolutely. they? They want it written down on paper. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You can't do that until Absolutely. you've got the ideas. So let's just look at idea generation. Mm-hmm. So it's a very different skill set than planning idea generation. Okay, you're using a different kind of part, different pathways in your head, if you like, uh, as we've already mentioned. So often people think that they want quality over quantity. They mm-hmm. think they want the right answer. They okay. want the right plan, but actually. The way that the brain is more effective is quantity builds quality. Okay. So the more ideas we come up with, the more likely we're to come up with a good one and also some new thinking. And what I mean by new thinking is not the thinking you've always done because you'll have some stuff in your head that you've always done and mm-hmm. that'll come out. But by doing an exercise around idea generation and coming up with lots of ideas, you're probably going to get to some new thinking, which is what's going to give you some new actions. Now, there's a very simple tool that we use here. It's it's a kind of list. If you like lists, this is great. Like a nice list. Yeah. If you don't like lists, maybe you you want to do maybe a mind map. And most people maybe have heard of a mind map where you can kind of get a bit scattered. Some people love mind maps. Yeah. Others move away from them. You've just got to use what's best for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Having yeah. said that, I would put in a vote for mind maps uh, because when you were children, yeah. everybody liked mind yes. maps. It's just that it's yeah. been taught out of yeah. you. Yeah. Really fair point, that is. Really fair point. So if you like mind mind maps then app use that great tool if you like writing a list if you're kind of a linear person this is a great little exercise so you just just write one to 20 with the question how could i possibly achieve whatever it is blah, that blah, you blah. want to how achieve how could i possibly yeah. now it's get quite it's, it's quite key that you've got the words could and possibly don't write how will i do this the brain will interpret that in a different way and you'll come up with it will it will close it down because it's trying to come up with definites. How will I do this rather than how could I possibly achieve this thing? And I find that you get better at this. If you, you try do. it the first time, yeah. uh, you might not come up with as many. But actually, after a little while, you start to get quite your brain learns to become more creative. It so does. it really is a rehearsed or a, a le- it can be a relearned Without behavior a Without or a thinking way, way of thinking. So. One to 20, Mm -hmm. how could I possibly achieve it? And all you need to do during that is thinking right. And I know that sounds obvious, thinking right, but literally when you think of something, write it down. And it's it's quite key to this exercise. Whatever comes into your head, you write it down. Even if what you write down has nothing to do with the question. Okay. Which might sound a bit strange, but what we're trying to do is kind of like your brain's like a hopper. You have an idea, write it down, and another one drops in. Write it down, another one drops in. At this point, you're not doing any evaluation. So you're not going, oh, I could do that, I could do that, I could, oh, no, I can't do that because that's going to... No, you're not doing that at this point. You're literally brain dump okay. time. Okay. Anything, even the most stupid idea possible. Anything. Because from a stupid idea can come something else. Correct. Sometimes from a stupid idea comes nothing, but sometimes... Correct. And again, that's how mind mapping works, isn't it? You go off on a tangent and something might come from it. And this is just a linear version of it. Okay. There. Okay. When you've done that, when you've got a list of ideas, only then do we move to planning. 
Okay, yes. so we come up with the ideas first and then we move to planning. So what we do, you're saying we need to be uh, careful yes. that we don't, partway through our ideas generation, start thinking about planning. Correct. We must wait. Make them discipline. That's yeah, the word make I was them looking for. Two, the way that I, I find it useful is make them two different activities. Sit down to generate ideas and then sit down to make a plan. Okay. They're two very, very different things, okay? What we're doing now is we're going to take those ideas, you're going to get rid of your silly ones, and you're going to pick your priorities. Okay. You're going to prioritize your priorities. However, most people, when they've done that, then stop there. They stop with their priorities and they make a plan. That's fine. It's going to get you to a certain point. What we also need to do is then prioritize your time because often people don't put the right amount of time into the plan. Okay. They kind of go, we've got a great plan, Luke, and we've got five minutes a week. <laughs> okay. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. And more importantly, and I know this is something that you're quite keen on, people need to prioritize their energy. And that goes right back to that emotional bit Absolutely. on that tear cycle to go, actually, how am I going to make sure that I've got enough energy to see this plan through? Yeah, one, of the, one of the objections a lot of people come up with when we're talking about being at your best is, oh, it'll be tiring to be at your best. Or, oh, I'm just so weary. Yeah. I think it's really sad to base everything on I don't want to get tired. Yes. I love being tired. I love to do stuff to the point where I am really tired because I feel really worthy. Yeah. And in actual fact, all that stuff that we think we might get tired about we don't in actual fact yeah. it drives us and gives us more energy it does it does absolutely. life's about being energetic yeah. yeah and if we're enjoying something generally we get more energy anyway absolutely so so three things when planning not only priorities which is the normal go-to but your time where you're going to fit this in mm -hmm. and how are you going to generate the energy levels that you need and that can get, come from everything to what you eat when you're sleeping all the way through to what what the thing is that's motivating you yourself so then, so that now we've got ideas. Now we've got a plan. So we've gone from getting our right thinking and behaviour. We know what we're aiming for and why we're aiming for it. We've got loads of ideas, and now we've got a plan. Okay. Okay. So we finally move on to the final piece of the jigsaw, which is about now taking action, but also measurement. And this is something, especially if this is a personal goal in business, we're pretty good at measurement. We're pretty good, well, most of the time, we're pretty good at going, okay, so how are we going to measure that? Because we need to learn from it, we need to move on. We don't really do it with our personal lives a lot. Why? Because sometimes we think it's a bit worky. But actually, if we don't measure what we do, we can't learn from it. We've got no benchmark to kind of go, how can we do it differently next time, if that makes sense? There is a number of measurement tools out there and mm -hmm. learning analysis and all this kind of stuff. But the key thing is, is taking action. So doing it now or starting the process, and then measure as you go. If you're measuring as you go, you can change, you can adapt, you can review the plan as you go to get you to a point of success. That makes sense, yeah? So action measurement is pretty key. Now you might think we haven't spent a lot of time on action measurement, and no, we don't spend a lot of time on action measurement because actually taking action, if we're teaching this to somebody, we spend a lot of time in jigsaw piece one, two, and three, Mm -hmm. We spend a small amount of time in jigsaw piece number four giving them measurement tools, okay. but the action is up to the person. Okay. The action has got to be taken by the individual or the, the team The foundation of the thinking has to be right. We have to get our Correct. emotions in yeah. place. Absolutely. If we get those right, even the smallest action you're committed to in a much bigger way. Correct. And that's going to lead us on to the, you know, I said it was four pieces, but five steps. Mm -hmm. This is kind of going to lead us on to that. And at this point, we've got the, that action piece in that tier cycle. Uh -huh. Okay. Do it now rather than later. How many times do we put stuff off? Do we procrastinate? Do we okay, say we're going to do it tomorrow, mm -hmm. but we don't start it? Nothing gets done. It's, it's start the journey now. Start with step one now. So four pieces of the jigsaw, but there's one more step to go. The final step for me is personal responsibility. So we can do all of that. We can go into businesses. We can work it with individuals. We can give them tools and techniques. They can come up with wonderful plans. Their self-talk can be brilliant, but unless those individuals and that business takes personal responsibility for making this happen, it's not gonna get done. And for me, personal responsibility comes down to a set of five choices that we have in life. Okay. Choice number one is how much time we're gonna spend on it. We touched on that earlier with the, with the action and measurement. How much time we're gonna spend well, on it. Well, how important is it to you? You know, when Correct. you ask yourself that question, how important is this to yeah. you? Because a lot of people kind of go, I'd like to get fit, but I don't want to miss coronation yeah. street. <laughs> Absolutely. Gonna, really? That is a great example. Heather. Okay. So how much time we're going to spend on it? The second, how much effort am I going to put into it? So we mm. talked about motivation. 
how much effort am I really going to put into making this happen? Well, when I first learned about all of this thinking about, oh, 20 odd years ago, uh, I was about to go on holiday and I bought a load of tapes. Remember tapes? Yeah, I, remember I bought a load of tapes, tapes to listen to on my Walkman. <laughs> uh, and I lay on the beach listening to tapes and I started to cut out a lot of stuff. And I started to spend time listening to stuff constantly because I thought to myself, I need to change. Yeah. I need yeah. to change from the way I am to the way I want to be. And it was important enough for me to think I'm going to put a load of effort in what yeah. have I got to lose for exactly. sake? if I'm not completely yeah. satisfied with where I am and it's not like I was in the doldrums yeah, or yeah. anything else yeah. but I thought I'm really going to put some effort yeah. into this because it is up to us isn't it the amount of people that go you know oh I tried that didn't work mm. How much effort did you really mm. put into it and, and how many times did you try it or how many times did you try change try again yeah yeah. You know? An example for me is when I go cycling. I've recently taken up cycling. And if I get in at five o'clock and go cycling, I feel great. If I get in, have my dinner and wait for a couple of hours, all of a sudden, I don't have the energy yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get it's up and go a bit cycling. Dark, yeah. It's getting a bit cool. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So actually, what's the choice? So first choice is time. Second choice is, is effort. The third is what people are you going to involve to help you? There are 7 billion people on the planet. And when we need help... Get them all involved. (laughs) Well, we might do. It's going to be a bit Uh, busy. When we need help, we normally go to friends, family and colleagues. And that's great if you've got good friends, family and colleagues. That's Mm -hmm. brilliant. However, there are another 6 odd billion people out there. And actually, if you've got a problem in your life and somebody somewhere else in the world has had that problem and fixed it wouldn't it be great if we could a find them and b ask them how they did it and nowadays technology allows you that i i've asked questions on facebook or linkedin or twitter or what have you and it's amazing complete strangers love to help you well generally if you're asked for help it makes you feel good yeah so when you ask somebody else for help guess what they generally help you you type in that i recently got a really weirdly i got a, a, a stain a grease stain on a silk outfit Mm. And I thought, oh, it's going to be ruined. And I just typed into, I can't remember which version of social yeah. media, how do I get grease out of silk outfit? And I got loads yeah. of, and I, then <laughs> I had to filter days, through some of yeah. them, but I got it and I got it out. Yeah. I got it out and it was yeah. a brand new outfit as well. well very good, very yeah. good. I'm so, very happy. Very happy. so, seven billion people, let's start thinking a little bit, I suppose, a cliche out the box, if you like. Mm-hmm. Let's start thinking about who could really help us achieve what we want to achieve. Okay. Yeah? Um, the next one is, again, a link to motivation, but instead of how much effort you're going to put in is what you choose the reason Mm -hmm. it's your reason whether that's towards or away from motivated as we said Mm -hmm. you ultimately choose the reason and the final one is it it links into action and measurement which is when you're going to do it so don't start it tomorrow because that will never happen when are you going to take some action Mm -hmm. so for me those five set of choices and this is kind of like if we're running maybe a leadership program in a business and we take people through this system for the first three quarters of the program it's all nice it's all tools and techniques people can learn for the last quarter it gets quite hard for people because they've got to start making some choices about making a difference yeah which is why it's a four-piece jigsaw but a five-step process okay only when we have personal responsibility does the system come together okay and it becomes a solution focus system at that point okay so we hope everybody has kind of enjoyed that and just a snippet of kind of what we do here um using the system will let you focus on real solutions if you follow that system through it will let you focus and it will stop potentially help you stop the worrying and everything else when we get the thinking and, and the behavior right it will give you a success system that you can follow time after time. Yeah, you, it, it's getting a process yeah. into place. Yeah. One, we like systems, don't we? Yeah, well, we have a habit of we use something yeah. once, it works, yeah. and then we think we've got it sussed and we don't use it again. Yeah. And then when things aren't working quite that way that we'd like it to work in something else, we forget we can go back to that system. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and when we've got that first bit of joy, mm. when we've got that first bit of that worked, um, you'll kind of go, oh, I'm going to use it again. I'm mm-hmm. going to use it again and again and again, which is great. It'll help you achieve your work and personal goals. Now, we've talked a bit about business and a bit about personal goals. Yeah. It's quite a generic system, but but from that slide where it's got leadership, coaching and everything else going on, you can apply this to whatever you need to apply it to. That That's the other thing. It's quite malleable. You're, yes. able, to, uh, you're able to kind of apply it to whatever you want to apply it to. You'll understand what really drives you and how you can be happy because we link in that thinking and behavior. We link in that emotional bit, don't we? It's very important to link those things in because the only reason we do anything in life is for feel-good factor. Yeah. You know, whether it's 
a business money, uh, helping charities, uh, getting a new car or feeling fit. It's all about our emotions. And yeah. therefore, learning how to understand those emotions is really, really important. And, 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 vital. I, and I purposely put that word happy in there because, you know, I know people that are successful but not happy. Mm. So, you know, it's whatever success means for you. But I think it's OK to want to be a bit happier. It's OK to kind of be happy as we, do, as we do these things, which is great. Okay, so I, I love this quote. I had to put it in. So life has no remote, so get up and change it yourself. <laughs> Which I just thought is brilliant. It's very modern day one, it, that, is it, isn't it? it? You, yeah. know? you know, I remember when we had a TV when I was a kid and you had like three channels hands. and you had to get up and press those big... Well, as the child, buttons. you would be the one. Go and, go and change, yes. the, ta- go and change yeah, the channel, yeah, yeah. John. Go and yeah. change the channel. Absolutely. Kids going, where's Absolutely. the remote? If there's no remote, how can I change the channel? So my question, our question to you, to people that are listening to this, if they've got want something they want to be a bit more successful in or want to be a bit happier, are you ready to make the change? Where do you want to be if you were doing an umbrella goal for the next 60 days? Yeah. What would that look like uh, so just just something to think about if you were achieving all your goals what would it be like if you were achieving all of your goals this is these are questions that we're not going to answer they're just just for the people listening so have a think if you were achieving all your current goals what would that be like how would it feel you would probably be less stressed what would it feel like to be less stressed in your life you were probably able to enjoy life more which mm. is quite an important one it comes back to that being happy bit if you have a solution focused system in place that ensures success, how's that going to make you feel? And generally what we find is people fi- feel more confident, they feel more able to go out and start achieving something, and even attempt some of those things that they never thought they were able to yeah. uh, in the past as well. So we're pretty much coming to the end. We've talked about that personal response. You can either take some action on this after after listening to this to webinar, or you can put it off till tomorrow. We've got a great big fat question mark there because we often put things off to tomorrow. We never get to if mm. that makes sense. So again, it's up to the well, guys. If it, if it matters to you, surely yeah. you should do something yeah. now, a little bit of something. Yeah. You don't have to do it all today, but uh, yeah. just take a step. What, what might you do that might just start you on the on the journey yeah. and 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 that 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 might be that you want to to have a chat with us about something it might be you want to go off and read a book it mm-hmm. might go whatever it may be um you could take some action if you want to take some action with us you can book a call in us there's the you can follow the link there'll be a link at the end of this webinar that you can click that will take you through to our diaries you can put a call in with That's us and, nice we'll, and, and we'll have a chat yeah we'll have a chat with you about that okay however mm-hmm. our time is quite precious so only give us a call if you're serious about a applying this to yourself okay if it's a personal thing whether you want to apply this in your business or whether you want to apply it with a team because what we what we can't do is as you can imagine we're going to get a lot of calls um what we can't do is just you know answer everybody that kind of goes well but I, if I'm you're serious we yeah, want to help exactly, yeah. absolutely really want to help serious, if you're serious there, oh, and that calls free of charge there's no and, and we won't try and sell you anything on the call or anything like that we just want okay? to help it's just a call uh, to see if you want some more information okay and that's our lovely pictures again uh, uh, yeah. yeah so book a call in with us follow the link like i've said on there Thank you for listening to uh, to this webinar. There's our contact details up there as well. If you did want to, um, you know, get hold of us, that's uh, that's okay as well. Thank you for your time today, Heather. Thank you. We hope you've uh, enjoyed listening to this solution-focused webinar. Look out for more in the series, and we'll speak to you again soon.